stop thinking about the research topic for the moment uh, because you're wasting your energy if you keep on thinking when there is really nothing to think about. Today, I want to talk about something very important and that is your research topic. Um, so, if you're watching this, you probably are an undergraduate student or even probably a graduate student and you are looking for possible ideas on what research topic are you going to pursue. Um, and I think finding a research topic is a very crucial part of the research process. Essentially, it is uh, what many consider as the very first step. Many undergraduate students experience a lot of problem in finding a topic. If you do not do this properly, it will bite you in the eye. This may have some cascading effects eventually or some consequences eventually which will be difficult to deal with at the end. I think one of the common misconceptions about a research topic is that as a group of students who, who are planning for their thesis, the common mistake is that students think about what research topic they will pursue. In my personal opinion, Thinking about a research topic is a futile exercise. I am not saying that there is no thinking involved in arriving at a research topic, but if you only think with practically nothing to think about because you haven't read anything, then thinking about a research topic in that case is a futile exercise. So imagine a blender and you turn it on uh, and it blends, but even after, even after so, what do you get out of that? You get nothing because in the first place, you did not put anything to blend. So that's pretty much what thinking does. It does nothing, not unless you have something to think about. And by something to think about, that means to say that you should have read something. Um, you should have a grasp of a particular um, research area, a particular research agenda. Today, I, I want to talk about the method that I use. Well, uh, this is the method that I learned from my mentor in graduate school and according to him, it's not so much about thinking about a research topic. The better operative term would be finding a research topic. Okay. Finding a research topic. So how do we find a research topic? To find a research topic, there are certain questions that you need to answer. So my method of finding a research topic is you know, step by step. It's very de deliberate, it's very gradual, and typically I would expect that these are what researchers in the field do in order to uh, pursue a, a research topic. So I have here about six questions that you need to answer. And when you do so, that will bring you closer to what research topic you will pursue. Okay. So the first question is, what is your general research interest? The method generally is funneling. So we have to start with something broad, something general. Um, and this is crucial, especially for research groups because you might have different research interests uh, and it's really difficult to do something you're not interested in. So the first step really is uh, to determine or what is the common research interest of the group. Uh, and by research interest, it's, it's a broad area, a broad sphere. Of course, I'm speaking in the context of psychology uh, because that is my discipline, that is my field. So what are possible general research interests in psychology? Uh, it could be a particular branch in psychology, for example. You might be you know, generally interested in clinical psychology 
It might also be a population. Uh, for example, you're interested in children, you're interested in undergraduate students, you're interested in employees. It might also be a professional practice. Um, you're interested in uh, counseling education, broader class of psychological phenomena. For example, cognitive processes, you're interested in various cognitive processes. Start with something general. Um, and from there, we can fine-tune it. After you have decided what is your general research area of interest you know, as an individual or even as a group. So the next question that you need to answer is, what phenomenon do you want to understand better? And by answering this, essentially, you're also answering the question, what phenomenon do you want to contribute to understanding to? What we do in science, or what science does basically, is we try to improve our understanding of our world. Um, and our world, in its various dimensions, physical, psychological, can be broken down into various phenomena. What is a phenomenon? A phenomenon basically is an event, or something that happens, something that you experience something that you experience through the senses or you know internally in the psychological world there are many events that happen emotions how does emotions happen um, or for example um, in professional counseling practice how uh, how is trust established between client and counselor or for example if, if your general area of interest is um, the population of undergraduate students, how do we keep undergraduate students motivated to study? So these are various phenomena that you can contribute to the understanding to. So what event, what psychological phenomenon do you want to understand further? And if you will become a researcher, you want to be known as somebody who contributed to the understanding of this psychological phenomenon because essentially that's what we are doing. After you have decided what psychological phenomenon do you want to understand, do you want to contribute to, we now have to start reading the literature and we have to answer the question, what theory best describes this phenomenon? Uh, what is a theory? A theory basically is a representation of reality, a representation of the phenomenon that we are interested in. If you consider, for example, the theory of reinforcement, it basically explains how learning happens. Why is it that we learn certain behaviors and we do not learn other behaviors? And according, the explanation of the reinforcement theory is that we learn behaviors that are reinforced. Basically, that is the gist of the reinforcement theory. So what theory best describes the phenomenon that you want to understand? Now, there are a lot of theories, and that is the nature of our discipline. There are many explanations to uh, specific psychological realities. So you really have to read, so you really have to read quite a lot. Um, and decide um, which theory will be your starting point. And this is very crucial, this is very important. Of course, my constructivist colleagues would have to disagree uh, and many of them would say that theory is not very important. Um, or there are multiple theories and that is what is essential in understanding something. Uh, and of course, they do understand that um, I am you know, mostly a post-positivist and I'm coming from that perspective. Now, essentially, when you have read the theory, you now have a working understanding of the phenomenon that you are interested in. Uh, and you know, there is something to think about you know, by this time because you have already read something. Finding a research topic, asking research question, you know, partly relies on how much you know about the field of research that you are interested in. So this is very, very important. Okay. Now, let's go to the fourth question. So after you already decided what, um, what is your general area of interest, 
what is the psychological phenomenon or the phenomenon that you are interested in and you already have a working knowledge of that phenomenon because you've already read and understand the theory that explains this phenomenon we have to read other materials what do we do with theories as researchers if you're coming from a post positivist perspective what we do with theories is we try to falsify them um, we try to test if they are untrue and if we cannot falsify them that essentially strengthens the theory so what has been done in the literature um, here we have a theory that discusses an understanding of the phenomena that you want to further understand what do more current researchers say about this theory have they found evidence to such theory have they found counter evidence have they attempted to expand the theory have they suggested that some aspects of the theory are problematic and we will learn about this if we read literature particularly empirical studies that have attempted to study such theory so that's the next step okay. next so you've already read the literature um, that tried to test the theory that you are you know interested in the next question that you have to answer is what research gaps or unanswered questions did you find after reviewing pre previews and current literature when we do research we think that we answer certain questions and that is true but the thing about research is that every time that we answer certain questions we also end up asking even more questions so there are a lot of unanswered questions which we can find in you know the literature that we read um, specifically if you go to the section uh, future directions there you can find uh, things that the author suggests we do next uh, and that normally is you know, an abundant source of possible research gaps or unanswered questions for example you know, there might be certain contradictions whereas one theory says whereas the theory says one thing but um, current evidence says otherwise um, or it might be that some papers agree with the theory and some papers do not agree with the theory you know, when it comes to their findings that is an inconsistency so we can ask what made it inconsistent what are the conditions we're in you know it agrees with the theory and it does not agree with the theory so you can hypothesize about you know why there are inconsistencies so you can propose a moderation hypothesis so list down those research gaps that you have found and from these gaps that we have found we can now select our research topic so the sixth question is which of these research gaps do you want to address and if you're able to answer that question you have found your research topic of course when you select the research gap choose the research gap that you are you know, comfortable with doing there are certain levels to it um, there are certain research gaps that are very complex and possibly can be addre better addressed by trained research professionals there are some research gaps that are not very complex and can be addressed by an undergraduate student like you or a you know, master student like like yourself so there if you answer those six questions you will find your research topic and that research topic you know, essentially is your research question as well and when you do find your research topic then you can be concerned about other things um, with regard to your research such as how do I answer this research question which is you know, a question of methodology you know what methodology am I gonna use to answer this research question okay so that's it for today I hope that my short um, discussion helped you in finding your research topic stop thinking about the research topic for the moment uh, because you're wasting your energy if you keep on thinking 
when there is really nothing to think about because you haven't read anything. So stop thinking, grab an article, and start reading. And when you do so, you have a better chance of finding your research topic.